When I built the studio, I put a wall in front of the window so I don't have any light coming in and therefore have a complete controlled environment for recording my YouTube videos. The one thing I didn't really factor in was that there will be a really hot summer and I don't have any AC. So let's make today's one a quick one. And all the lights in here aren't really helping and that is a good segue to what we're talking about today and that is lighting. And the one item that I'm going to review today is one thing that I always wanted to have at my disposal in my camera bag at all times. And that is a small pocket RGB light. And the one that we're talking about today is from Andy Cine, namely the R1. So let's start the review after the intro. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three. Listen. In the past, I've usually used my Philips U light that you can see up there in the corner or for bigger shoots and commercial work, I've used a dedicated light where I attach the gel in front of it so that I can illuminate the background in different kind of colors. Neither solutions aren't really great because the Philips U light is rather big and it's also not really bright and the battery life sucks as well. It does work well as a practical light because it looks kind of cool, but other than that, it's pretty useless. The second option, having a dedicated light, is obviously way brighter and way better, but it's also really unpractical because you can't really travel with it, it's big and having to put gels in front of it is just a hassle that I really don't like. So looking at a small pocket RGB light that is so small and tiny that you can travel with, has great battery life and is actually bright enough to illuminate most of the scenarios that I'm using it for is the best option for me. And I was looking at the Andy Cine R1 because that is also affordable and checks pretty much all my boxes. So what would I use this kind of light for? I actually been using this for shooting most of the B-roll of some products in the studio because setting up my razor light is also a hassle because it's really big and it's really hard to get the directed light onto small items such as microphones or other stuff that I'm reviewing here on this channel. So the Pocket RGB R1 is actually perfectly fit for this kind of scenario. Another option would be to actually use it as a hair light or just some light to illuminate something in the background like I'm doing right now as you can see right here where the back of my set is actually illuminated in blue. My initial concerns were that this tiny light just isn't bright enough but boy was I wrong because this small thing is way brighter than I actually thought it would be and the battery lasts for about two to three hours even on full brightness and that is really really cool. So as of right now, I'm actually taking this on all of our commercial filmmaking shoots and this one sits in my camera bag all the time. And since it's so tiny, there's basically no excuse to not have it with you at all times. Especially since I'm filming a lot of corporate interview kind of style videos and I really like having the option to add some color contrast to make the scene a little bit more interesting. But now let's talk about the light itself. It basically has three different modes. The first is a regular white balance mode where you have the option to have a bicolor output between 2500 Kelvin all the way up to 7000 Kelvin. So you can actually use this to match your lighting source or create a little bit of color contrast when using it as a key light or a rim light. Since it's really small, it obviously isn't a great option using it as a key light because it's just too hard. I mean, yes, you could put a diffusion in front of it and and it's actually somewhat bright enough if you get it really close to your subject's face to have it as a key light or an on-camera light when you just put it on a cold shoe. But this is not what I'm using this light for most of the times. Mode number two is the mode that I'm using this light in the most and that is the RGB mode. And you can quickly and easily toggle between all the use all the way up and it goes all the way through if you start over. So it's really easy to quickly dial in the correct U that you're looking for on set. Which also makes it the perfect light to actually use on your product shoots when you quickly want to change settings between a red and a blue light for example and just by toggling a quick button you can actually go through the different kind of use. And like I've already said even in the RGB mode this is actually a pretty bright light so you can actually use it to illuminate small spaces like this one right here in the corner. And the last mode we have is a pre-recorded effects mode. Effects like police sirens or strobes or just rotating through different use. And that makes it a really great option for short films if you just want to fake some outside lightings on a really tiny budget. 
Usability is pretty self-explanatory and straightforward. You have an on and off switch, you have one button to toggle between the modes, and then you have a dial on the side where you can change between the brightness or between the U and the effects. On the bottom you find a quarter inch screw thread. Quarter inch, quarter inch screw. Whew. Find a quarter inch screw thread. A quarter inch screw thread. On the bottom, you find a quarter inch screw thread hole. Jesus, that was hard to say. And with that mounting option and it's lightweight, you can pretty much mount it to wherever. You can put it on a cold shoe on top of your camera, but you can also mount it on a tripod or a boom pole. The way I usually use it is on a small ball head attached to a mini tripod, and that makes it really versatile. As I've already mentioned, you get about two to three hours at full charge out of the R1 at full brightness, which is actually pretty decent. And if you lower the brightness, you actually get more one time. And if you do run out of battery, you can power the entire thing via USB-C. And here's also the biggest problem, because in theory, it's pretty cool that it uses USB-C, because most of us have a lot of USB-C power bricks lying around. The problem is that the R1 doesn't come with its own power brick, so you have to use your own one. And here's the biggest problem because it just doesn't take any and it's pretty picky. I tried to use my MacBook Pro charger and it didn't work. My iPad charger didn't work. My iPhone charger didn't work either because the R1 only works with chargers that are up to 10 watts. And that is something that I found a little bit annoying because now I have to use a dedicated charger just for the R1 because I pretty much don't have any other accessories that use such a light charger. and it would be so much easier if I could just use it and charge it with all of my other chargers that I have in my pocket anyway. In theory, you can actually power the entire light while being on the charger. So even if you run out of battery, you can still keep using the light when hooking it up to power. But it doesn't work if the light is completely depleted of power because then it needs a little bit of runtime before and then you can use it while hooking it up to power. But that's pretty much the only issue I have with the light and everything else is really everything I'm looking for. And I'm probably getting another one so that I can use them even more versatile on some shooting sets, especially for interview setups and talking heads like this. Coming in at only $80, this is a tool that I think every filmmaker should have in their camera bag. If you're shooting short films or doing YouTube or doing some product shots or even corporate interviews, I think this is something that everyone can benefit of. So if you do want to get one, and I might probably get a second one for our filmmaking productions, I will put a link in the description below so you can get yours. And I hope you liked this review. And if you did, you know the drill. Subscribe to our channel, like this video, and I hope to see you on the next one.